out of every shonen, the one I think at this moment is the best blind recommendation is. Uh, are you ready for this? <laughs> this I don't want to turn the next slide, man. I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to turn the next slide. <laughs> okay. If you're in America, go to f to sleep. Uh, Michael B. Jordan did an interview with <clears throat> the BBC, uh, where he basically recommended some starter anime because apparently the new Creed film is very heavily anime inspired. And the interviewer asked him what some of his favorite starter anime was. What starter anime would he recommend? I have actually made a list myself of the perfect, the perfect anime starter pack. But before we move on, this video is brought to you by Naraka Blade Point, which is in the middle of a near collaboration. Naraka Blade Point is a free to play action battle royale that is available on all major platforms like PC, PlayStation 5 and Xbox. There are up to 60 players that can fight each other until the last one standing and the key to winning is predicting your enemy's attacks. With the game's counter system, you can predict the enemy's next attack and use corresponding actions to counter them. With a wide collection of melee weapons, players gain access to a dynamic moveset that leads to very various fighting styles and powerful combos. If you want a battle royale with an in-depth close quarters battle system, this is the game for you. But now you can do this with some of the most iconic characters and aesthetic in recent gaming history. Whether it be 2B or 9S, Naraka brought these iconic near figures into the game as beautifully designed character outfits, along with their iconic weapons. You can explore near inspired areas with easter eggs from the game all over the map, and also join in-game events to get various near styled cosmetic like avatars for free. Honestly, I just played this game on stream and and actually, it's uh, so much fun. So, what are you waiting for? Get in on this event now. Click the link in the description to download Naraka Blade Point for free today and play as your favorite characters from the Nier series. Thank you very much to Naraka Blade Point for sponsoring me today. Back to the video. I have literally made a PowerPoint presentation. That is an absolute lie. I just fucking lied to you. I got my editor, Alan, to make me a PowerPoint presentation. I just told him what to put into it. Hey, group projects, am I right? You just take the credit for other people's work. Come on, that's, that's, that's how you do things, right? That's how you do things. No matter what, I don't really care what Michael B. Jordan says is his starter anime because uh, guys are fucking legend already. Flashbang, uh, deal with it, guys, deal with it. I am sticking with light mode. Tell me though, if you were a total layman, you've never seen All right, anything, here we go. Here we seen... go you know, Neon Genesis, Evangelion, you've not seen a thing. What are your go-to, here's where you start, suggestions? Oof. Uh, One Piece. No, no, okay, <laughs> no. Dragon Ball. No, no, okay, okay, okay. Naruto. Okay, actually, I think Naruto is uh, legit better. Still a no from me. Bleach, Hunter, Hunter. My guy just named the big three. <laughs> the biggest surprise of this was nothing that Michael B. Jordan said. It was the fact that the interviewer actually said Neon Genesis Evangelion. I'm like, what? Recommending anime for a starter list is totally different than just recommending an anime that you like, in my opinion. Instead of just judging other people's lists and other people's articles, I decided to do my own, okay? So you can judge me. <laughs> Every image in this uh, was put in here by Alan. I would have to say, Normally when it comes to recommending anime to someone who doesn't enjoy anime, my best kind of method is to ask them, hey, what kind of movies and TV shows do you like? Because to me, the best starter anime is an anime that's suited for the person. There is no one anime meets all kind of like presentation. I, sorry, I got distracted uh, cause someone in chat said redo of healer. Uh, we're trying to get people into anime. We're not trying to scare them away from anime, you know? Otherwise, I just recommend f***ing Inukai's dog. What of like criteria do I think make for a good starter anime? Class, 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 listen, listen. You better not be falling asleep. I see, I see you there in the corner. Okay, you, next to the window. Not sure, not sure if this is obvious, but hopefully, hopefully what you recommend uh, is a good show. No, no. Are you that guy who just recommended Redo of Healer? Second criteria. It needs to hit hard and it needs to hit fast. There are a lot of good anime that might not have the best start. It might take a few episodes to get into. Hard and fast. <laughs> okay. Third criteria. It still holds up today. 
Um, there's a lot of, let's say, people who like to quote some starter anime, and they quote it because it was the anime that got them into anime back in the day. We just saw that with Michael B. Jordan. Remember the time when we just kind of like turned our heads to filler and we just like, oh, okay, so it's just, it's just anime doing anime things, you know? And as much as it pains me to say, some anime don't look as good as what I remember them looking like. This is kind of my own criteria. Fourth criteria, no anime bullshit. What do I mean by that? There are some things that anime have in common that if you're into the anime community, you might kind of be immune to this kind of shit just because we've become so used to it and we kind of brush it off as that oh it's just that weird fucking anime thing you know oh panty shots oh that's just part of anime incest oh you know well she's uh, not related by blood so uh it's uh it's uh it's it's anime which leads on to my next criteria is there an isekai in existence even if it's fucking good that does not have any anime bullshit in it and I don't think there is. They look like fat mom jeans, right? No, they look good. Capri? I haven't worn these since I was like six. You look like um, alcoholic mom at the barbecue kind of vibes. Where's uh, where's your wine? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, maybe that's exactly what I'm <laughs> <laughs> If you are below the age of 18, you're probably already fucking into anime. Let's be honest, okay? My kind of target demographic for making this list is like late teens all the way up to any kind of like old age you want. Let's think about someone like your mom, your dad, your grandma, your cousins that you see at your family reunion who have a normal nine to five job. Why are you thinking about my mom when you think of anime, huh? <laughs> Who doesn't? Let's be honest, Bacon Soldier. Who doesn't? Have you seen your mom? Let's start off with the blind pick. I can see I'm blind. This might sound like a normal answer, but I genuinely, genuinely do not think there is a better blind pick than Attack on Titan. And I think it's the one that is most likely to get people into anime after they finish Attack on Titan. There are some shows in my mind, I feel you watch the show and you're like, okay, I'm done. Um, and that's how I feel when I recommend Ghibli films to people. Because when you recommend Ghibli films to people, they're like, oh, I'm an anime fan. I've watched two Ghibli films and I had no interest in watching the rest of anime because that shit's just weird. There's only a few anime I think can rival Attack on Titan in how much of a hook the first two episodes are. And it's one of the few anime that I think has actually matched the hype that it got. Moving on to the next one. If I were to look at Shonen right now and pick out of the Shonen that I've seen, what I think would be the best blind recommendation in the modern day and age. Uh ready for this. <laughs> this uh, I don't want to turn the next slide man I don't want to I don't want I don't want to turn the next slide <laughs> okay Jujutsu Kaisen I said it I said it okay now we get the salt out let me cook let me cook okay because this this is gonna be a long segment out of all of the modern shonen airing right now I think it's the perfect balance of kind of everything uh, you look at Chainsaw Man, which I think does hit the ground running. I think that's a very, very good shonen. But I think that's a little too weird. You know, if, if I knew the person and I, and, and I knew they were into like edgier and weirder stuff, I'd probably go, you know, try, check out Chainsaw Man. Something like My Hero Academia is a little too safe. It was basically between... Jujutsu Kaisen and Demon Slayer and I just think Jujutsu Kaisen gets there a little bit faster. It shows everything that a good shonen should show in its first few episodes. It gets running pretty quickly while still being safe but not too safe. How was that? Did I save it boys? Did I, did I save it? <laughs> Next! We go into psychological. It can't all be about punches and fights. 
It's still goaded to this day. It's fucking Death Note, okay? I don't think anyone would argue about this pick. Monster, no, no, come on, man, come on. Monster, that's a slow burn. It's amazing, but it kind of is almost like a novel. Death Note comes out of the gate storming like Attack on Titan. It still to this day has one of the best hooks in anime. Tetsuo Araki, who is a famed action director, directed Death Note and even in some of the most see some of the scenes where they are over explaining stuff he manages to direct it in a way that is still compelling and catches your attention moving on to action obviously uh people got tiktok brains man sometimes you just need to watch someone punching each other <laughs> And uh, it's f***ing One Punch Man. There, there is no better than uh, who said Boruto? Who the f*** said Boruto? <laughs> one Punch Man, I feel, works the best in this modern day and age just because of how oversaturated superheroes have become in modern culture. So I really wanted to put Mob Psycho 100 here because I think that Mob Psycho 100 is a better show in my opinion. Uh, but again, going into something blind, I feel like One Punch Man is just easier to get. I'm just gonna f***ing say, <laughs> you actually need less IQ to understand One Punch Man, so, uh, I think One Punch Man is an easier recommendation. <laughs> I wanted to put Giren Lagan and kill a kill, but holy shit. POV, you're talking to your mom. Mom, I'm gonna put on Giren Lagan. And uh, your and your mum's like, uh, why, why is uh, why, why, why are the girls not wearing any clothes? Uh, why is that sniper in a bikini? I think if you are to recommend anime to like a young horny teenager, yes, uh, Gurren Lagann, kill the kill all the fucking way, get hype, get horny. Moving on, let's go to drama. <laughs> Someone said EastEnders. <laughs> my drama pick uh, that I would recommend to someone if they just want to feel something if they just want to feel emotions it is Silent Voice Silent Voice is not only one of Kyoto Animation's best work it is not only one of the hardest hitting anime I think I've seen um, but it's such a human story without going overly melodramatic the main girl emotes more while saying the bare minimum more than most light novel characters who have 10 pages worth of dialogue um and i think the character animation in this is some of the best character animation um in all of anime just because of how many emotions you feel just by watching the main girl boruto has emotion too man <laughs> another one I, th I think kyoto animation is kind of goaded in this category because I really narrowed this down to a silent voice and uh, Violet Evergarden. Uh, Clan Ad? No. I tried watching Clan Ad and I couldn't f get into Clan Ad. It, uh, it gets good in Clan Ad after story and I'm like bro that's like that's like one season away. Unfortunately I also really wanted to put Anohana on here as well. Uh, I think that's a little too anime as well. Uh, especially with the whole Menma bullshit at the beginning. Uh, it definitely pulls on the heartstrings, but it's a little, Full it's, it's also a little too anime. Emotions too damn it. Okay, okay, I get it, okay, thank you. Charlotte? <laughs> ain't no way, ain't no way I'm putting Charlotte on there, man. Oh gosh! For the I don't masses. think you can get any more emotional than Baki. <laughs> than Baki? I mean, I was emotional during Baki. I don't know if everyone else got emotional during Baki. Uh, July and April also could have been in here again. Uh, I think I just I just think Silent Voice is just the top tier contender. So my pick goes towards Violet Evergarden. <laughs> Moving on, sci-fi. <laughs> Who said SAO? <laughs> Having a good sci-fi pick would be pretty good for a general audience. And my pick for sci-fi goes to... What? Wait, 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 wait. Alan? Alan, what have you done? Group projects, am I right? Am I right, guys? 
This is uh, this is Alan's little moment. He wants to he wants to recommend Mobile Suit Gundam Hathaway. If a new fan watches it, they can just quit anime straight after because nothing else will ever live up to Hathaway's Flash. All right, thank you, thank you very much, Alan. Thank you very much. All right, let's uh, let's let's give Alan a round of applause there. Let's give Alan a round of applause. But my pick for sci-fi is a. Uh, Psychopaths. To me, the first season of Psychopaths has still aged wonderfully. Uh, as the gro world grows more and more uh, reliant on social media, I wa I rewatch Psychopaths and I'm like, "Fuck me, this this is hit. This is hitting different." Because I'm like, some of these stories and some of these ideas presented might seem more relevant today than they did when it first came out. Kind of like Lane in that sense, you know? How no Bebop, bro? Okay, we'll get we'll get to that because that that was that was also a contender. I did not put Cowboy Bebop on my list, not because I don't think it's good. I think Cowboy Bebop is a bait pick in this modern day and age for a gateway anime. Okay, with streaming platforms, with Netflix, with the whole advent of the modern media landscape, people want ongoing stories. Episodic shows have become the outlier. There's still a space for them, but there ain't nowhere near the same amount of space as there used to be when media was dominated by television. What about Neon Genesis Evangelion? Get the f*** out. Get the f*** out. Come on. Come on, guys. That's a hard enough recommendation for anime fans. F***ing <laughs> <f> Joey. <laughs> Moving on to, of course, romance. <laughs> I don't know if there is a good romance that fits all. There's a lot of harems out there, and there's just a lot of teenage romances in there that kind of just are like, eh. I, I tried to pick something more mature. Uh, so of course my pick is domestic girlfriend, baby. Let's go, let's go. Uh, what can I say? Mature romances where they sleep with each other. The dramas that your mum and dad, no. It's, it's, it's not domestic girlfriend. It's, it's actually your name. Um, I'm still not 100% happy with this pick. Your name's not all about romance. There's still like a romance aspect in there, which I feel could get people interested to explore the genre a bit more. Chobits, bro. We all want to raw dog our gamer rigs. No, no Chobits. Have you forgotten how they uh, turn... Uh, how Chi gets turned Nothing on. beats the romance in Baki SMH. Okay, actually, actually, kind of cooking there. Uh, powering up with sex, all right. But your name is kind of just the most inoffensive romance pick I could think of. It's got a lot of pretty colors and some absolutely beautiful scenes. And I, and, and I think I just wanted to pick something that was not too not too anime central don't believe me nagatoro ain't no way man ain't no fucking way romance is already hard enough to sell for someone that's into anime you try to get someone uh who's into shonen into romance and it's like you know that meme where it's that guy talking to a brick wall that's what i feel like sometimes when i'm trying to talk about my favorite romances golden time to me is not only my favorite romance but my favorite romance that i feel could appeal to a wider audience that aren't interested in high school romances and want a bit more of an adult take onto it. But fucking Ghost Bannery, man. Ghost Bannery is such a big fucking wall to overcome that I, d I, I, I was like, oh, oh no. I don't know if I could bullshit my way past Ghost Bannery. <laughs> Moving on to... <laughs> Sometimes you just need something that is just a safe pick all around. Something you can watch with the entire family, okay? Think about it. Um, you're at- you're Yasuga at a- Yasuga no Sora lol. Okay, okay, you- you guys need to stop now. You guys need to stop. So picture it. You are- you're- you're- you're at a family gathering or something. You're at a family dinner. It's Christmas or something and you just want to put something on TV that is just inoffensive to all ages. Um... It's Spike's family. It's it's got Spike's family is out of everything the safest and most inoffensive pick. It's got a cute anime daughter in it, and every episode you come out feeling this warm, fluffy feeling that no one can actually complain about. Is it the best anime of all time? No. But 
Is it an anime that you can put on at any time, any day, in any situation and have the same effects? Yes. Prison School though, my favorite family friendly show. <laughs> Orimo, another family friendly show. Thank you very much. Nothing Has that beats having a cozy time with all the family around watching Baki together. Thank you very much. Moving on. One of the hardest things that I had growing up was trying to convince my parents that anime was a medium worth getting into. So I've split up the next category into two. One for mum and one for dad. Vinland Saga. <laughs> what dad would not fucking love Vinland Saga? Not only because it's a fucking goaded show, man, but number one, Vikings. It's, who's not gonna think that that's cool? But, uh, you know, having interviewed the creator of Vinland Saga myself as well, there are so many themes of fatherhood in Vinland Saga. Thorfinn himself has like, basically multiple fathers. Uh, Prince Canute as well, we could see the father figure in his life as well, which definitely was not his own father. Is this the new I work for the BBC? Yo, I've said that once. I said, I've said that once or twice at most guys, come on. Obviously the creator said that he, he himself is a father and that's why he's put a lot of themes of fatherhood in the entirety of Vinland Saga. Even though I'm not a father, yet some of these scenes made me want to pick up the phone and call my dad and just wanted to uh wanted to just to make me say dad i can appreciate you man let's uh let's go share a pint together let's uh play some footy die in the life of a true brexit gazer uh which brings me to all the mums out there it came between two and i had to pick between the one that hit me harder uh, but to me it's wolf children. Alan's tried to troll me here with the one fucking scene of uh, the mum getting with the wolf, but I'm, I'm not gonna make any judgments, maybe? Maybe your mum might like that shit. Who knows? The reason I picked wolf children was because of one scene in general. It's just, it's just a montage of when she gets pregnant and uh, all, the, all the events leading up to her pregnancy, to her birth, and the family trying to take care of them. I think it's one of the most Show beautiful montages. Mom and, her two -hit multi -target attacks. and I'm gonna ignore that. And it's one of the most beautiful montages in anime. I've shown my mom wolf children and my mom cried multiple times during it. My backup pick was Makia. Um, both amazing, amazing, amazing films. And I'm sure any mom would appreciate you showing either film to her. Is this Inukai but worse? Oh my god. <laughs> bro, bro, you can leave. Couldn't really think of any more categories. So I was like, I was like, wild card, baby. Why not? This is just one I wanted to recommend. I've showed this to a lot of non anime fans, a lot of my mates who are not into anime and they fucking loved it. It's fucking Barkano. Barkano goes past that anime bullshit. The one thing that makes it a little bit of a harder sell is that they need to use their brains for this <laughs> because it is pieced out of order. But as soon as you mention, imagine this is either a Quentin Tarantino film or a Guy Ritchie film that's been spread out into a whole TV series. And they're like, okay, I get it. That was my 10 blind picks for someone if I knew nothing about them, uh, we we have some we have some bonus rounds. Uh, could have done way more genres in this, but I honestly just didn't have the time. Say you've shown them the first tier of anime, you might want to get them into some genres that might be a little bit more anime esque. That you might be trying to test the waters to see if you can bring them down with you into hell. And to me, Isekai. It's ReZero. It's it's gotta be ReZero. It's got that whole like time travel loop aspect, which I feel a lot of the times people need that hook to get into a new genre. And I feel ReZero has the strongest hook out of a lot of isekai that I've seen. Next, we have high school. Um, it's Kaguya Summer. You're going to have to encounter high school, whether you like it or not, at one point in your anime watching time. 
And I feel like Kage Sama Love is War is the best introduction to that. As the series goes on, it kind of feels like you're emulating having friends and hanging out in a high school setting and you're just feeling and and you're just seeing your friends doing dumb shit. Yes, I did just say I was parasocial to the Kage Sama Love is War cast, but so help me God. Cute girls doing cute things. I can only recommend what got me interested in this genre and that's a place further than the universe. It has cute girls doing cute things, but it also has an ongoing plot line as well. There is a goal. It just makes it easier to recommend than a lot of other shows that might just be like completely, completely slice of life. Bocce the Rock could also take this place. And last of all, what the f Alan? <laughs> all right, my boys. You want to check how, how close you are to your mate, all right? They might seem like a normal functioning member of society on the outside, but uh, maybe uh, maybe they have a little degenerate side to them. You know, maybe in the sea of degenerate anime, if you want to see if your mate can appreciate degeneracy. The classic baby. High School of the Dead, it's the GOAT! Uh, guns and boobs, and it's aged wonderfully. It still looks better than most edgy shows airing nowadays. Alan, I don't know why you put this gif on, because we're probably gonna need to censor on YouTube, man. <laughs> Obviously my family now know that uh, I'm, I'm into anime. I'm an anime fan, I do anime content. And I think about five, six years ago, my cousin, who is an absolute normie, and I've tried getting him to anime, so many times. I've tried sitting him down, but we've never had the opportunity. But he's tried. Twice. Attempt one. I recommend this show called Attack on Titan. And he's like, oh, okay. I'll give that a watch. Do you know what he does? Do you know what he f***ing does? He goes, the cartoon version wasn't available on Netflix at the time. Uh, but I saw, like, the live action version available, so I just watched that. And I'm just like, no. No. Why would you do this? You were this close. You were this f***ing close. How could you be so close to scoring but miss so f***ing bad? And I was like, no, no, please, please. Give anime a chance, please. I'm begging. Bit of background on my cousin. Um, he is as much of a normal person as you could be. He loves Marvel movies, but at the time, he was into HBO series and he was really, really, really into The Walking Dead. Uh, so he was like, let's uh, try and find an anime that's also a zombie show. What do you think pops up? Uh, he comes to me and he goes, yeah, I watched High School of the Dead. Um, is all anime like this? I didn't get why all the girls were like that. Why, why, why was like the animation like that when all the girls drawn like that? I don't, I don't get it. And I was like, I'm never gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm never gonna get another chance. Yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, look, uh, please subscribe, smash the like button and stuff. Good starter anime, yeah, yeah. High school DXD, yeah. On a scale of my opinion on Crust to Joey's opinion on Jujutsu Kaisen uh, to Konya's opinion on Jojo, where does it land on the scale? 